Today, real quick, we have a great man of God that has come from a far place to be with us. And God has strategically sent him and positioned him right where he's supposed to be on this day. Amen. He wasn't supposed to be anywhere else. He's a great man of God, great friend. Thank God for what he's doing. He comes all the way from Swaziland. He loves the people of God. And he carries the mantle of God with the authority and the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And God has sent him here to us today. Help me by standing all over this place to welcome none other than the Apostle Justice Lamini. Come on, give him a praise. He might sing, he might dance. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Lift up your hands, let's appreciate God for the gift of life. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the gift of life. I'm standing this day alive and well, alive and kicking, because your grace has sustained me. Thank you for the gift of life. Please, everyone, just take a few moments and just thank God for the gift of life. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Please be intentional. Many people are sick in hospital. Some cannot move. Some cannot see. Some are paralyzed and stroked. We are standing well and good because of the goodness of the Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of life. We praise you, our life giver. We are able to come into the house of the Lord this day to worship you, to praise you, to fellowship to receive your word because you gave us the most precious gift which is life we praise you we magnify your holy name help us almighty god to use this life you give us to serve you to honor you to be a blessing to fellow human beings in the name of jesus now i want to, to thank god for the gift of salvation that's what i always do lift up your hands thank god for the gift of salvation the biggest miracle that happened to you father we thank you for the gift of salvation the bible says it's by grace through faith that we've been saved it's not our efforts we never worked for it it's a gift of god we bless your holy name thank you father for the gift of salvation Thank you for sending Jesus to come and die for us. He became the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Today we are the redeemed of the Lord because of what you did. Great things you have done for us. Thank you so much. We praise you. We glorify you. We magnify your holy name for saving us, for adopting us to become your family. The family of God on earth. We praise you. Now thank God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Are you ready to thank God for the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Open your mouth and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much that now that I'm your child, you've sent forth your Holy Spirit into my spirit, into my life, by whom I cry, and call Abba Father. Thank you so much. I'm no longer ordinary. I'm a partaker of the divine nature. I'm a recipient of the nature of God living on the inside of me. Thank you, my Father. The Bible says I'm peculiar. I'm different. Say, Lord, I thank you for choosing me for saving me for placing your holy spirit in my life i praise your holy name forever and ever help me oh god to cooperate with the holy spirit day after day so that my life can continue to prosper for your glory in the name of jesus oh hallelujah oh hallelujah oh hallelujah oh hallelujah take your beautiful seats thank you so much amen so we're going to discuss a subject i've titled 
keep your faith alive. Keep your faith alive. The same way you guard your mobile phone. People now, they are always, where's my phone, you know? (laughs) Oh, it's here, where's my phone? (laughs) So the same way you guard your phone and you keep it charged and you keep it handy, keep your faith alive. Because just as in the United States, we use the U.S. dollar to procure, to buy goods from the shops, to buy services. We use what? The U.S. dollar, right? And we are in a kingdom as Christians. The currency of that kingdom is faith. Without faith, you can't buy in this kingdom. You get your healing through faith. You get your breakthroughs through faith. You get whatever miracle you want through faith. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus kept on going around. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And how he went about doing good, healing those who were oppressed by the devil. But you'll notice that he kept on telling the people he healed. Your faith has healed you. Faith is your buying power. In this kingdom, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. So keep your faith, what? Alive. We are going to use as an opening scripture, First John chapter 5, verse number 4. Thank you, Jesus. First John chapter 5, verse number 4. Can we read 1, 2, 3, 4, read? Let's repeat it, please, until it sinks into your spirit. Father, bless the reading of this particular scripture and let it resonate with the spirits of your people be engraved in their hearts forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Take your seats. Now, if you read the same scripture, because what they use, we read a scripture and we don't understand it. The New Living Translation puts it simpler. It says, for every child of God. Can you see Three statements of fact there. Every child of God. It means no discrimination. The moment you become a child of God, you get a new superior classification. You cease to be ordinary. Every child of God defeats this evil world. Is it a promise? It's not a promise. It's a statement of fact. It's not a promise. You are told that the moment you become a child of God, you are rewired, re-engineered to prevail. And let's correct something here. Getting born again or becoming becoming a Christian does not mean the end of your problems and your challenges. No. No, 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 no. It simply means now that you are born again, you've received the superior nature of God that enables you to rise above your problems. Unfortunately, you will not conquer your problems if you don't apply the correct mechanisms. Faith is one of them. Every child of God overcomes this evil world. The world of wars, the world of, of chronic diseases, the world of economic hardships and family, you know, uh, misunderstanding, so many troubles in this world. The world that is invaded by demonic evil spirits. But as long as you are born again, you have this assurance that no matter what attacks you, you'll overcome. I like preaching in a church like this, living faith. Your pastor is a highly blessed man. And the anointing, the anointing and the grace God has placed upon him is not just for him. It's for your upliftment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
It is for your upliftment. The anointing is contagious. You catch it like COVID. As long as your spirit is open, tell your neighbor, let's catch it. It is contagious. Hallelujah. You cannot be in such a, an environment where the blessing of God is visible and tangible and you are struggling. It means your spirit is not fully correctly aligned. Hallelujah. Because God anoints a man, a person for the benefit of multitudes. Hallelujah. And I declare that you will finish the remainder of 2024 strong. In the name of Jesus. Every limitation that the, the devil has placed upon your life, we shut it down. We uproot it. Hallelujah. So every child of God overcomes this evil world. Whatsoever the devil is throwing at your life, you've got power to overcome it. And I charge you now, rise and overcome. Any challenge, overcome it. Is it sickness in your body? Overcome it. Becoming a child of God gives you hope. Yeah. Hopelessness goes the moment you become a child of God. Hallelujah. Because God connects you with his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit empowers you to face every challenge head on. And as we graduate as children of God, we must stop talking about problems and talk more about promises. Yeah. Which are yes and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, let's talk more about promises. Say, please, tell me less problems and more promises, please. Charge your neighbor, say, from today, I want to hear from you less problems, more promises of God, which are yes and amen. Hallelujah. So the verse told us every child of God overcomes this evil world. And it says the victory by which we overcome is what? Is our faith. Write it down. Faith is your buying power. In this kingdom. Whatsoever you want. You access it by faith. That's why Hebrews 11, 6 says without faith. Hello, Hebrews eleven six. 6. Without faith, you can't do what? You can't please God. Maybe let me just chip in this just to galvanize and strengthen your faith. The first thing you need to know is that God loves you unconditionally. He loves you as you are. He cannot not love you. Because God is love. So when you know that God loves you, you must now be assured that if he loves me, surely there's nothing he cannot assist me in. If you are a child of God, you have entitlement. Your new identity is your bargaining power. Did I communicate? What did I say? Your new identity is what? Is your bargaining power. If a child who is not your own comes to you to ask for help, you will sort of be reluctant. But if your daughter is asking, yes, my girl, I'll make a plan. Empowered by the identity. Empowered by the father, mother, uh, child, mother, child, father connection. Every child of God overcomes. So your number one winning point is your new identity. Never doubt who you are. It's got nothing to do with your age. We are sons of God. Because God sees us as his children, not how you look outwardly. Your spirit man is what is a child of God. That's where the image of God is. Outwardly, you are the image of your father and your mother. Hello. Tell your neighbor, chill up, God loves you. Cheer up, God loves you. Cheer up, God loves you. Don't move around somber, confused, stressed. You are loved in heaven. Your faith will never work unless you are sure God loves you. The devil will bombard you with accusations and condemnation. Tell that devil you are too late. I'm a child of God now. Now that I'm in Jesus, I'm uncondemnable. Your condemnations are null and void. Because Romans 8.1 says there is therefore now. 
no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God will never hate you. In fact, he will never hate any human being. Even the guy who is a co-criminal who's in prison now, God loves them. God will never hate a human being. He always hates sin, not the sinner. Am I communicating today? He will never tell your neighbor, relax, God will never hate you. God will love you forever. Hallelujah. He hates sin. He loves the sinner. Did you write that one down? You did. <laughs> he hates sin, but he dearly loves the sinner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every morning we wake up to God's fresh love. Hallelujah. So you need to move with that confidence knowing that you are alive. These are the things that will keep your faith alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Number one, what will keep your faith alive? Know that you are now a child of God. Don't walk in fear. Greater is the God who is your father now. Number two, know that you are loved. Your faith can never work unless you are sure God loves you. That's why Jesus said, when he was teaching the disciples to pray, he said, you must say, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. But the powerful thing, the our father. Amen. Say, God is my father. Say, God is my father. I belong to the Jesus family. I'm together with the Holy Spirit. I will never be defeated again. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Father God, for loving me with great love. Everlasting love. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now I want us to read 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3. Because I want us to enter a segment now where we are going to quickly learn about how to unleash your faith. Amen. Yes. Amen. Faith must be put to work. Keep your faith alive. Amen. Because that is your weapon for conquering challenges. The victory comes through what? Our faith. Second Corinthians 10 verse 3 to 6. For though, let's read 1, 2, 3, 4, read. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. The devil will always throw things at you. Always frust try to frustrate you. Try to afflict you with sickness. But you need to know that you have got weapons. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to know that you have got what? Weapons. Your faith can never be alive unless you understand your weapons. Hallelujah. So the weapons that we use, they are for pulling what? All strongholds. We do what? We pull them down. God will not pull it down for you. That's why the Bible tells us in Luke 10, 19. What does the Bible say there? Behold, I give you power, authority. The word power there in the Greek is exousia. The right to exercise power. Yeah. Hallelujah. Behold, I give you what? Power. To tremble upon what? Serpents and what? And scorpions. It means that's a figure of speech. Serpents and scorpions are demonic and satanic afflictions. Yeah. You rise up against them. You don't complain about the devil's attack you confront it. Hello? Tell your neighbor, let's confront and stop complaining. So whatsoever troubles you, confront it. Replace complaining with confronting. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Replace complaining with what? Confronting. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, just to give you a quick rundown of the blessings that Jesus bought for us, secured for us, which you must fight for. 
the blessing. Jesus, number one, he bought for us the right to be declared Russia's children of God. It's a right. 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us that this Jesus who knew no sin was made sin for us. So that we might become what? The righteousness of God. Number two, Jesus secured for us the right to have the Holy Spirit. Every Christian has a right to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is your empowerment for conquering every attack. Holy Spirit is your preserver. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Galatians 4, 6, now that you are children of God, God has sent forth the Holy Spirit into our hearts by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. So these things, you must keep them alive. Say, I'm together with the Holy Spirit. I didn't hear you. Say, I'm together with the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me. I don't need to feel any goosebumps. I don't walk by sight and feelings. I walk by faith. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is with you. He's together with you. Keep on communicating with him. Talk to the Holy Spirit the same way you talk to people until your battery runs flat. Talk to the Holy Spirit the same way you talk to people on your mobile phone until your battery dies. Say, I will speak to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Say, welcome Holy Spirit. Anoint me with your power. Anoint me with your fresh anointing. Say, I love you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is the one who guards you. When the devil assails you, the Bible says Holy Spirit lifts up a standard. Hallelujah. Don't forget the Holy Spirit. Don't ignore him. Be cognizant of his presence. All the time. Say, Holy Spirit, I know you are there. Hallelujah. You will not conquer challenges unless you work together with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the one who keeps your faith alive. Jesus never came to give us a religion. Religion was already there. People were going to the synagogue. He came to introduce a new system. Partnership between humanity and divinity. He came to enable us to have a relationship with the God of heaven. Though we are sinful mortals, he qualified us by his blood. Say, I'm qualified. Say, I'm qualified. Speak with an attitude. Say, I'm qualified. Hallelujah. So Jesus secured for us the right to have the Holy Spirit. Why? When Holy Spirit is on the inside of your spirit contained by your body, Holy Spirit causes your body to overcome sickness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, by the grace of God, I've never been admitted in a hospital. No, I've never. Because I was, uh, God graced me, I got born again, and I got to understand so strong that what it means to be born again. Yeah, I partake of the divine nature. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, 11, if the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, that same Holy Spirit who raised Jesus, if he dwells on the inside of you, that same Holy Spirit will rejuvenate your body. If sickness attacks you, Holy Spirit will rise within you and that sickness will be dissolved. Hallelujah. Because greater is he that is in you than the devil who tries to attack you. First John 4, 4 says, little children, you have already overcome. Why? Greater is he that is in you than he that is trying to destroy you. Yes. Hallelujah. According to the Holy Scriptures, a Christian is never supposed to be dis- destroyed by sickness. Because the third thing Jesus secured for us is physical healing. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse number 4, Jesus bore our infirmities. He carried our sorrows. Isaiah 53 4. He's not trying to do it. He did it. Hallelujah. You must keep your spirit strong. Keep your body healthy. Amen. 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 How do you keep your spirit strong? Recite the promises. 
impose the promises on every attack hallelujah when you feel down you say greater is he that is in me when you are facing a challenge something that seems difficult you say i can do all things through christ who gives me the strength hallelujah, hallelujah. you keep your spirit strong by reciting the scriptures I like the Islamic uh, movement, religion. They are commanded, compelled to recite certain extractions from the Quran five times a day. Look at how they are taking over the world. Christians are busy asking for prayers. It's unbiblical. You keep on speaking the promises of God. Hallelujah. You use the word of God as a weapon. Jesus secured for me and for you physical healing. Isaiah 53 5 says, By the wounds that were inflicted on him, we are healed. We fast forward, we go to 1 Peter 2 24. By his wounds, we were healed. 1 Peter 2 24 says, Christ Jesus bore on his body our sins. He took all your sufferings, your misfortunes, your all evil spells that were supposed to be upon you. That's why he declared in John 10, 10, he said, I've come so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Say, my faith is coming alive again. My faith is coming alive again. You need to believe in God and believe in yourself and believe in your new makeup. You are not born again to fail again. That's a serious one. You are not born again to suffer again. It's getting more serious. You are not born again to be defeated again. Hallelujah. You are born again to champion. Say thank you Jesus. You are born again to do what? To champion. To prevail. To win. To succeed. Because you are now born of God. God advertises himself through us. And you must not complain about problems because there won't be testimonies without problems. Amen. All testimonies are born out of challenges. When you get a sickness attack and you conquer it, that's a testimony. And I declare you shall conquer every sickness attack. I say you shall conquer every sickness attack as you sit under the strong anointing of the man of God, your pastor, Dr. Bao. What an anointed man he is. Amen. Say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So when the devil attacks you, the Bible says our weapons are not Carnal, they are mighty through God for pulling down. So when the devil throws asthma at you, pull it down. Amen. When the devil throws cancer, pull it down. Don't lose hope. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. If you are looking for a new job, get it by faith, not by complaining and wishing. Faith is your buying power. Hallelujah. So when sickness attacks you, the Bible says our weapons. Now let's define and explain the weapon. My God. The word of God is the trigger. No, let me, let me rephrase it. The word of God are the bullets. Amen. Write it down. The word of God is what? Are the bullets. You use the word of God as what? As the bullets. Your mouth, I almost said your big mouth, is the gun. Is the barrel by which you shoot the word of God. Amen. The word of God is the bullets. Yeah. Or the bullets are the bullets. Then your big mouth is the gun that you used to shoot. Your mouth is not for talking and eating. Please. <laughs> your mouth can never just be for talking and eating. Excuse me. Your mouth is for creating the kind of world you want. Your faith can never be kept alive unless you are a talker of the word. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a talker of the word. Say, I'm a talker of the promises. 
So your, your mouth is the gun, the barrel that releases the bullets. Because the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. It pierces, it cuts through every problem. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. I want you to be a warrior, a soldier. Say I'm a soldier. After the service of today, as we are enjoying the month of September into October, the great month, we need to rise in higher power. We are here as Christians to ensure that the devil does not wreak havoc in our world, in our city, in our families. Hallelujah. So you use your mouth. Tell your neighbor, use your mouth. Tell your neighbor, use your big. I didn't say it. Use your big, big, big mouth to speak your miracles. Be a fighter. Our, our weapons are mighty through God. They are not carnal. They are not like the system of this world. It looks foolish, but your mouth is an instrument for creating miracles. When the word of God makes contact with your mouth, believed by your heart, miracles are created. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a talker of the word. So let's say sickness attacks you. You just wake up. You know you are feeling clogged in your chest or you feel some pain in your back. Do you complain? You take the weapon, which is the word. You use your mouth as the barrel, as the shooting instrument. And you begin to shoot down the pain. How do you do it? By his wounds I was healed. By his wounds I was healed. Because in this kingdom you are not allowed to speak what you feel. You are supposed to speak what you believe. <laughs> Am I just crafting this? No. No, 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 no. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 4.13 or 1 Corinthians 4.13 it says because we believe Therefore, we speak. God will never believe that you believe. Did you hear what I've said? God will never believe that you believe until he hears you speak. He will never believe that you believe unless you speak. Whatever you want now, you have an instrument of creating. It is your mouth. Begin to declare it. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. There's a verse I saw, powerful. Matthew 15, 13. It says, anything that God has not planted must be uprooted. Does God plant sickness in people's bodies? Everything that God has not what? planted. Does God send bad dreams to you? Anything that God has not planted must be what? Must be uprooted. Who must uproot it? You. Uproot it. Attack it. He gave you the authority. Use the authority. Use the word of God. Use your mouth to cause changes. Keep your faith alive. I like what the Bible talked about Abraham in Romans chapter 4, 19. Powerful. The Bible talking about Abraham, the father of faith. Our, our forerunner, the one who went ahead for us in the faith matter. It says when there was no hope, the man held on to hope. He was as old as 100 years. Sarah's womb was dead. But the man had hope. But what I like is verse 19. It says his faith never became weak. Many of us when troubles are mounting, we allow our faith to become weak. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, let's keep our faith alive. Let's keep our faith alive. Let me give you a secret. We are so good in attending stomach matters. And we fail. We are slothful in attending spiritual matters. You are a two in one. You are a spirit. You live in a body. The same way you diligently ensure you secure food for your body, secure food for your spirit, man, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. I, I, I like people who, 
When they are eating, there are people that I love so much. You find that they are eating, they are eating, eating the dessert and is reading a scripture. So both avenues are eating. Food for the stomach, food for the spirit man. Not you are eating, you are chatting with people. They will not help you, man. Just create a new discipline. Say, if I don't read the Bible, I refuse to eat. If I don't read the Bible, I refuse to eat. Because you'll be, you'll be, you'll be physically heavily built. But you are spiritually malnourished. You are thick outside, thin inside. <laughs> Say hello neighbor. H- how is the ratio so far? Thick outside, thin inside. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, be careful. Think outside, thin inside. (laughs) Balance the equation. The same way you enjoy eating, enjoy reading the word of God. So that you are thick outside, you are thick inside. Keep your faith alive. Am I helping somebody? God is never in the business of babysitting Christians. He will never babysit you. The same way you get annoyed when your grown daughter is still asking you to help her dress. You said, when will you grow? God does not like babysitting Christians. That's why he gave us the authority. He gave us the word of his power. Hallelujah. Am I helping you so far? Am I helping you? Be a talker of the word of God. We are still going into great tribulation in the world. These problems we see, they will keep on increasing. Jesus talked about them for the last days, right? So that's why we need to keep our faith alive. Amen. Because as long as our faith is alive, we shall overcome all the challenges. Amen. Are you blessed so far? Are you sure you are blessed? So whenever the devil attacks, attack back. Did you get that one? What did I say? When the devil attacks, you complain. No! You attack back. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, 17, taking this, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the devil attacks with problems, you attack back with promises. Did you get that one? The devil attacks with what? Problems. You attack back with what? Promises. You look at your bank account, is empty. You say, my God shall supply all my needs. You don't say, ah, my account is empty. No! You talk back, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. You wage war. Are you understanding me? The challenges will keep on mounting. Mount the promises. Is your faith alive now? So you see like things are not going okay. You say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You are applying for a job. They are not answering you. You say, I remain confident that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What keeps you strong is talking the promises, not wishing. The Bible says the word of God is like a hammer. Hammer that attack. Hammer that asthma. Hammer that diabetes. You say diabetes you will give up. You will not take me out. Because by the wounds of Jesus I was healed. The scriptures that never lie. It say by the wounds I was healed. Cancer you will have to give up. I'm born of God now. You will not take me out. Tell your neighbor I'm not dying before my time. I don't know about you. I'm not dying before my time. Hallelujah. Declare and say I'm not bearing any relative. <laughs> Unless the, the grown up ones who are tired of earth who are ready to go. Those one may go well. Not young people. 
killed in an accident. No! Killed by cancer. No! Shela basuka baya. Oh, rise your feet and say, I'm a warrior. I'm a fighter. Rise your feet and say, I'm ready to fight the good fight of faith. I'm ready to wage war. Keep your faith alive. That devil is a loser. You belong to a prophetic church. This church is called living faith. It means we produce miracles here. We stand our ground. We speak the word of God's power. And we overcome. Tell your neighbor, don't cry. Speak the word of victory. Tell your neighbor, stop crying. Rise and fight. Oh, Shalina Masukabaya. We are not ordinary. We are born of God. We are overcomers. We are prevailers. We are born of God. Believe in your God. Say, I believe. Believe in the word of God. Say, I believe. Believe in yourself. Say, I believe in myself. Hallelujah. Say, I can do it. Say, I can conquer. Say, I can win. Say, I can overcome. Say, I shall overcome. Because I'm born of God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just about to wrap up now. I'm just about to wrap up. But I want to leave you in high spirits. And I'm very intentional. I'm not here to hype you. No! I'm here to help you. No, I'm not hyping you. I'm helping you. I'm putting power in your hands. When you get back to your house, you stand there and begin to announce things you want to see in the remainder of the year. Whether you are a young man, a young woman, stand there. The Bible says in Job 22, 28, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. It says light will shine in your ways. God will not do it for you. Doesn't babysit? Yeah. The way some of you are looking at me, you think I'll babysit you. No, I won't. I'm empowering you. God does not be tell your neighbor, say, excuse me, God does not babysit. Let's grow. Say, let's grow, let's grow. Tell your neighbor, touch someone, say, let's grow, 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 let's grow. God does not babysit, let's grow, let's grow, let's grow, let's grow, let's grow, let's grow, let's grow. God does not babysit, let's grow, let's grow, let's grow, let's grow. The challenges are mounting, let's grow, let's grow, let's grow. The attacks are increasing, let's grow, let's grow, let's grow. God does not babysit. You need to grow. Say, thank you, Jesus. Two statements I will make again. Believe in God your maker. Believe in yourself. Refuse to watch others succeed while you are struggling. God does not have second class citizens. Succeed with the succeeding. Win with the winners. Overcome with the overcomers. Put yourself on the front line of life. Refuse to spectate others succeeding while they are struggling. If they have money, you must have money too. Because the US dollar is not written their name and their surname. It's for all of us. Hallelujah. Say I will not be defeated. Say I will not fail. Hallelujah. So whatsoever you want to experience in your life, keep your faith alive. How do you keep it alive? Speak the word of God. Speak the promises of God. Fight back using the weapon of the word of God. That problem will bow. I'm going to conclude by this. Keep yourself connected to the heavenly economy. Hello? Operate by the heavenly economy. Because the economies of this world, they fail any time. Are you understanding? Inflation keeps on rising. Cost of commodities are rising. But for you to connect to the kingdom economy, because remember the Bible says in James 1.22, be doers of the word. God will only perform and back up your doing of the word. 
Hallelujah. If you are not a doer and a talker of the word, God will not back you up. Because Jeremiah 1.12 says, God is watching over his word to perform it. Jeremiah 1.12. So if you are not a practitioner of the word, a talker of the word, God has got nothing to back up. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a practitioner of the word. Say, I practice the word. Listen, there are legal practitioners, medical practitioners. We Christians are word practitioners. Yeah, we practice the word. We do the word of God. We talk the word of God. We behave according to the word of God. So to keep yourself under the economy of heaven that never fails, be a faithful tither. Tithing delivers you from experiencing tightness in finances. Did you write that one? Tithing delivers you from experiencing what? Tightness in finances. Because God says if you bring the tithe, he will pour. So tithing guarantees non-stop financial supply. Did you write that? No. No. Your amen is tired now. <laughs> Tithing guarantees non-stop financial and material things supply. Amen. Tithing has got nothing to do with the pastor and the church. has got everything to do with your relationship with God. Amen. Tithing is what proves, it proves two things. That number one, you truly love God. Yes. Number two, you truly trust him. But if you don't love God and trust him, you'll have issues with tithing. Because you'll be gripped by the fear of not having enough. But if you trust God, you'll know God will supply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we want to always stay above the challenges, because we will not overcome if we are not tithing. Because in tithing, God says, if you bring the tithe, I will rebuke what? The devourer. So in tithing, it guarantees God's backup and defense. Hallelujah. So practice faithful what? Tithing. Number two, practice what? Consistent giving. Two schemes. Faithful tithing. Consistent giving. Why? Because giving guarantees constant getting. Givers are getters. Whatever you want, the law of this kingdom says give and it shall be given. So giving activates getting. Giving terminates delays. Did you hear what I've said? Giving does what? It terminates delays. The devil, oh, if you don't know this, you are living a risky life. The devil have always fights good things that are supposed to come to us. He's a blocker. He even blocks the right people from coming to us. Amen. Paul talking about it in 1 Thessalonians 2.18, he says, I've been longing to come to you again and again. And the devil blocked me. So you'll find that you are supposed to meet a right person, a destiny helper, and the devil blocks that person. But giving stops the blocking. You stop the devil's blocking of your good things by constant giving. People who tithe are not people who are employed. No, the Bible doesn't say that. People who tithe are people who touch and receive money. People who are not supposed to tithe and we must never trouble them are those who say, I swear before God, from January to December, I never saw a dollar. <laughs> the moment you see a dollar, there's a cut of God there. Amen. Amen. Am I helping you? Because it's our time to shine. Say we shall shine. It's our time to champion. Say we shall champion. It's our time to overcome. Say we shall overcome. Say I shall overcome. Hallelujah. So you come to church. As you keep on bringing money and laying it on the altar. The altar of God's house. God ensures money keeps on coming to your life and to your house. That's how it works. Givers are getters. 
The Bible says in, in, in uh, Proverbs 11, 24, if you are a generous giver, you will keep on getting more and more. But if you are stingy, you are activating poverty. You are the operator. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus.